game is to be where you are, be it honestly and as consciously as you know how. Watch the latest Ram Dass documentary film, Becoming Nobody, on Gaia.com. Of course, there was fear in losing that familiar identity. But there was always also wonder. The Gaia.com library supports you with transformational content. See it for yourself and go to Gaia.com slash Be Here Now and check out the Be Here Now playlist curated just for you. Visit Gaia.com slash Be Here Now and start your free trial today. Welcome to Ramdas Here and Now. I'm Raghu Marcus with a new edition of uh, this podcast that is so much fun for me. I really love looking for all of these different talks of Ramdas's or, or parts of talks that, uh, you know, they basically interest me. And so it gives me a chance to share, which I love to do. And uh, this particular uh, talk is actually Ramdas with uh, several friends, uh, and it's more contemporary. Usually, uh, what I choose comes from deep in the archives of our media library from Ramdas.org, Love Serve Remember Foundation. And uh, this one in particular is uh, a pointedly uh, part of a, a new. Uh, web destination that I wanted to mention to you, to everybody out there listening. Uh, it's called, uh, it's a podcast network called mindpodnetwork.com, uh, mindpod. And uh, interestingly <laughs> enough, as I listened to uh, this, uh, this talk, Ramdas came up with a whole thing around something called Soul Pods. And I thought, wow, Soul Pods, that's a good name too. But we have Mind Pod. And his Soul Pods thing was about, uh, he said, in Dharma land, we are connected. So there's, there's, you know, groups of people that are very connected. And he was referring in particular to this group that met in Bodh Gaya in 1970, 71, early 71, who did these uh, meditation courses, Vipassana courses, and many of these people uh, emerged uh, as uh, teachers in the West, from Jack Kornfield to Sharon Salzberg to Joseph Goldstein to Danny Goldman, of course Ramdas and Krishna Das, and on and on. It was a, so Ramdas referred to that as a soul pod. And in Dharma Land, he said we're connected, and we come to help bring awareness to each other and everyone we meet. So it's a beautiful little. Um, and nobody take that out there, okay? That's that's Ramdas's soul pod. We got to get it uh, copywritten. So this um, uh, t uh, it, this hangout is basically Ramdas did a uh, podcast with Wes Nisker uh, and Catherine Ing Ingram and Jack Cornfield, who were visiting him in Maui. And uh, I just love this whole thing. It's a one, you know, I say this over and over every time I look and find a, a, a talk, you know, and I'm, you know, thinking I'm too busy to listen to the whole thing. And then I end up being sucked in myself. And that happened again with this. So it's uh, it's got uh, a lot of riches. Uh, it's got Jack telling his story of meeting R.D. and their history together. And in fact, the three of them talk about how they first met Ram Dass and sort of the gathering of the tribe, back to that soul pod thing, and, and how um, these Westerners uh, basically took from the East in their minds and hearts essence of Buddhism and his Hinduism, which represented deepening um, our understanding of ourselves. Uh, and uh, I think that's succinctly uh, put uh, about how, um, how this, the genesis of these people um, uh, at that time and, and how, um, what this meant to them and how they took this and brought it to the West. Pretty, uh, nice, uh, history, kind of a history <laughs> lesson around this. And, and it's something that I think many people have asked about how every, how all these people met up and so on and so forth. This also 
has the origins of Ramdas's at this time. I think it was a couple of years ago. Uh, Ramdas's uh, thing around loving aw- teaching, not thing teaching around loving awareness, which is he's just introducing to these guys, and so that's uh, you know uh, pretty uh, interesting as well uh, to hear that. Um, and uh, there, there's a, all sorts of different topics in here that they managed to get to. None the, none the least, of course, is this around Buddhism and Hinduism and, and how the, these, these guys are all Buddhist teachers and, and really talking about how they've come around at this point in their lives to realizing just how important love is in the practice and how they do blend that and how Jack talks about how, you know, how much loving kindness and metta is expressed in in the teachings at this point and how that really comes together with uh, Ramdas and our relationship with uh, Maharaji and and bhakti yoga and and another thing i really love this particular thing that jack talks about um, it's it's something that i have um talked about uh, on uh, mind rolling um uh, which uh, i think some of you know that I do with uh, David Silver, and that's called the spiritual bypass. And Jack talked about it uh, because, I don't know, I think Ramdas was sort of kidding him a little bit about his, you know, f- uh, firm focus on dealing with uh, psychological stuff and uh, that he did, in, you know, uh, in his earlier days. And, um, uh, and he talked about, and, and this, I think this is just a, such a, um, a common occurrence with people, with all of us, who get involved with the spiritual path and teachings to, as uh, we said earlier, to uh, get to know our true selves. And, um, you know, in the process, we get high. I mean, it's a lot like acid in, in, a, in, a, in a microcosm. But how we get high, but how we use that high not to deal with our stuff. I think that's a critical, critical um, uh, topic that uh, I, I'm glad they brought up here, and it's something that uh, at some point I'd like to further in some of these podcasts and maybe talk to Ramdas a little bit more about it. Um, and there's a lot of talk. Uh, there's quite a segment devoted to suffering, which uh, you know, what is it, and and uh, uh, how do how does how do we relate with it in in, in our lives and um, uh, Ramdas um, talks about uh, himself with the stroke that pain was the adversary to his sadhana, and he'd get caught in pain. And um, then, as, as as soon as he was able to get into that loving awareness place in his heart, he was able to witness it, and then it backed off and became more distant. And nobody has more experience with uh, directly with pain for the longest time than Ramdas. Um, and then he mentioned suffering allows you to understand your attachments and particularly life versus death. I mean, so there's deep, th- talk about deep thoughts. Um, so very rich uh, stuff here. Uh, again, I want to go back to our uh, MindPod network. Go to mindpodnetwork.com and look at, in one website is a destination of 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 this a uh, soul pod and we should uh, I love that term so uh you have Ramdas's podcast there you have mind rolling me and David Silver and you have Jack Cornfield and you have Sharon Salzberg and you have Krishna Das um and uh rich rich stuff not just the podcast there's plenty of blogs you get Krishna Das doing his kirtan thing um recommendations for books and and so on and and of course, the way that all of this gets podcast gets supported is through simply it's all free, but it's through uh, your support and donations that we count on, and particularly to go into eat any one of these podcasts or MindPod Network as a, as a blanket for all of this, and uh, bookmark the Amazon links, either the one link for MindPod or or say you, gee, I just want to support Jack. Well, you can do that. And just grab his link, uh, which is uh, you just easily navigate to his page and grab the link and bookmark it. And then everything that you buy, uh, uh, the it, both uh, Jack and MindPod will get a piece of. 
very small percentage, but if you if you invite uh, your friends and neighbors and family to do this because it absolutely takes nothing away, even if they don't care about any of this Dharma stuff, you know, get Aunt Mabel who sits there and orders Amazon stuff day in and day out, get over there and just, you know, do us a big favor and just bookmark it yourself. Like take the link and just put it right up on her uh, on her bookmark bar. So uh, uh, here is uh, this uh, exceptional uh, hangout, basically, with uh, Ram Das, Wes Nisker, Catherine Ingram, and Jack Cornfield on Maui. And uh, this is Ram Das here and now. What what is your name, sir? Oh my name. <laughs> well, I just assumed everybody would know me. <laughs> um, my name is Wes Nisker, and uh, I'm I'm not a Hindu. I am a Buddhist person. I I'm a Buddhist Jew, and uh, I've been involved. I first met Ramdas so very quickly. I met Ramdas forty years ago in Bodh Gaya, India. We both were at a meditation retreat. There were only about 30, 35 people there. Among them was Ram Das, myself, Krishna Das, uh, Daniel Goldman, the, uh, Joseph. Uh, Joseph? Joseph Goldstein, Sharon Salzberg. And uh, here we are 40 years later, uh, having smuggled this Asian wisdom back to the USA. Yes. And uh, how do you think it's going? Well... This is certainly a, 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 a measure of how it's going. <laughs> we, we're, uh -oh, we're in trouble. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> my name is Catherine Ingram, and I first read Be Here Now, I think in 72, maybe when it first came out, was it 72? Yeah. And, uh, and in 1974... I went to Naropa to meet that guy over there because I was I used to be here now as my Bible. And in fact, Ramdas had a reading list uh, at the back of the book, as probably most of you know. And I read through every one of those titles. I read every book that he recommended. Uh, and I was quite a young person then. And, uh, <laughs> and um, all fired up and, and went to Naropa to... Um, to be with Ram Das, and there uh, got introduced to an entire world that, um, you know, ruined the rest of my plans for life, <laughs> but I've, I've been having a pretty good time since those days. Didn't you get any Buddhist uh, teachings there? I did, I did. I met Joseph Goldstein there, and then I began uh, going to retreats. I went to a retreat with Joseph right away in 1974, and then with Jack. Immediately, Jack and Joseph were teaching together, and uh, I became involved with helping start the center in in Barrie that Jack was also involved with, and um, just been on the Dharma Trail all these years. And actually, uh, Ram Das invited me to teach at some of his retreats back in the early 90s, and uh, that launched into a sharing that I've been doing ever since. So. Yeah. <laughs> I sometimes tell people the Dharma ruins your life, you know, the <laughs> life that you had planned, the, the things that you were trying to get away with, in a sense, or all the different ways you were trying to find happiness in this and that. You know, you fall in love with the Dharma, and it's all of that has to just... We are all falling <laughs> in love with the Dharma. Yes, we are. Yeah. That is true. So I came back from being in the forest monasteries of Thailand and Burma, 1972, also read Be Here Now, and then found my way to, um, I started graduate school in psychology because I wanted to figure out what happened to me, basically, and see if it would help. I'll, I'll get there. Okay. <laughs> I'll get there. And um, uh, I went to the first meeting of the Massachusetts Psychological Association, and there was Dan Goldman, who showed a big mandala of the Tibetan Wheel of Birth and Death and was giving this whole Buddhist psychological teachings to the psychologist there. And I introduced myself and he said, come over to David McClellan's. <clears throat> David had been the 
chairman of the Department of Social Relations at Harvard, who both hired and fired Ram Dass, <laughs> yes. and all things in between. So I went over, and that's where I, I my name is Jack Cornfield, and that's where I met Ram Dass and Danny Goldman and Chogim Trumpo one of those days he was drinking and we had a nice conversation about monasteries and he said, uh, hold on just a moment, it's probably my daughter calling, I'll call her later. Stop that. Hi mom, I'm talking to Ram Dass, it's okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, Chogim Trumpo was, was drinking and he said, I want to start a Buddhist university. Um, and uh, I showed him some of the manuscript of teachings that I was working on. He said, oh, good, you come and help with the Vipassana, the Theravada Buddhist meditation. Um, and so from David McClellan's house, which was this kind of nexus of um, yeah. wild, wonderful, yeah. creative Dharma people from India, um, I fell in love again. I was so happy being in the monastery and I came back to America and I was lonely and kind of by myself. And then I got to David McClellan's house and I met Ramdas and Danny and Tara and all these people. And it was love at first sight. Mm -hmm. It was really fantastic. I felt like I was home again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And did you and Joseph meet at, uh, at, at uh, Noparova? We, we met at Naropa. We had met the year before. There was, you were doing a be-in or a Dharma, actually it was a Dharma festival in Boston, at Boston University in 1973. And Joseph Goldstein had come back from India, not for the last time, but almost, um, and needed a place to stay. So somebody called me, maybe it was Danny, and said, you know, do you have a place for some of these old India wallas, my friends, to come and crash on the floor? Of course, Joseph came with a bunch of other people from India, because they were all acting like they were still in India, crashed on the floor. And that's where I met him. But it wasn't until the first summer in 1974 at Naropa that we all really became heart friends. It was somehow we got there and it was a moment where we said, we're doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then people started to say, well, teach us, do a retreat. Stuff. And, and you came to one of the first retreats I taught was in Great Barrington, Massachusetts with Joseph and maybe it was Richard Barsky. Yeah. You came to that retreat. Um, and a number after we got IMS around us, <clears throat> I remember you coming to sit at the center in Barry, and everyone was doing their their Vipassana walking meditation, this very slow, mindful kind of zombie walk that we do in Vipassana. And you would do it between the picture of Jesus in the stained glass window in the upper walking room on one side and some saint on the other. And you said it was the only place in the Buddhist building that had this bhakti love in it, and that was your spot. <laughs> <laughs> the Buddhists were a little dry, you said. <laughs> but you have, didn't you, in your recent book, I see some bhakti in you. Yes, yes, I... I've borrowed it from the Hindus, it's helping. <laughs> uh, 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 no, I needed it. You know, the sweetness, it's made, it's made such a difference, actually. Um, there's a way in which the Buddhist practice that we started with was very austere. And um, you could say dry, that's what you used to say. But it was very austere. And, and it had tremendous clarity and a kind of wisdom, but it didn't have so much heart. Yeah. And then we would go and sit with you, you know, and the chanting. And I, and I want to ask you a question. We all have questions for you. But I, I want to ask you a question about Hinduism and Buddhism. You've watched in these decades as this whole dance of people going back and forth between Hindu practice and Buddhist practice yeah. in the West. And, you know, what do, what do we have to learn from one another? What do you see in this Hindu-Buddhist dance? Well, <clears throat> I, it's interesting, um, I studied with your teacher in Thailand and Joseph's teacher in, uh, in... In Bodh Gaya, with Manindra, no. Goenka, oh, in Mahasi in Sai, Burma. 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 Yeah. And um, that, that... Uh, mindfulness and straight it 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 made my uh, 
bhakti trip take off because I when I wanted to I wanted to focus on my guru I focused mm -hmm. in the same way in breath mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I mean I to me those I went one two that and It's not, I don't think it's dry and wet. It's, um, Buddhism came out of the Hinduism. In, like Christianity came out of Judaism. Mm -hmm. And um, there are, there are um, parts of, um, Hinduism that are very much like Buddhism and um, and for we Westerners we we took the uh, the East to our minds and our hearts and Buddhism and 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 Hinduism um, was represented deepening of um, uh, deepening our understanding of ourselves, and I don't, I don't think, and. Yeah, and that's yeah. They they very vary in method, but I don't I don't see. We can talk about a goal or or. Like I say, the one is to merge with the one, mm -hmm. and that isn't a Buddhist thing. If you give me the Buddhist thing now. <laughs> <laughs> merge with the zero, maybe. Right. Well, you know, it's interesting as you were saying that. Uh, I think I found bhakti in Buddhism when I started practicing with some of the Tibetan teachers who uh, were devoted to the consciousness to or to emptiness that, that the that somehow the ultimate reality was worthy of a kind of deep love yeah and that that and they of, also uh, great gurus and they 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 good guru Kripa right. Because Tibetan Buddhism was so close to Hinduism, yeah. so we got we had got the the Southeast Asia Theravada Buddhism, and then there was this other thing that came in, and I think opened a lot of hearts. It gave a lot of heart to us, yeah, and it made it. I mean, now the way we teach Vipassana is filled with metta and compassion and loving kindness and much more devotion and service, and it feels like Hinduism has crept its way in and yeah. kind of moisturized and opened the way we understood Buddhism. There's a lot of devotion in Thailand and Burma, but that's not what we went for. We went for that very strict stuff. And yeah. now we realize that what we needed was really to that's right. bring in the heart. Well, I had a question related to this <clears throat> on the eve of Valentine's Day. Um, and that is, I've always loved the Gandhi title um, of his autobiography, The Story of My Experiments with Truth. I've always loved that concept, my experiments yeah. with truth. But in, I notice in my own case, I feel like my experiments are now with love. And I was wondering if you would speak about your experiments with love all these years. And Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, 
Well, I'll tell you, it's very, um, very immediate for me. Um, <clears throat> um, I'm now working with um, um, the concepts which you will maybe don't don't you know uh, this ego, which is who who I think I am, and this soul. Which is, Okay. What's and, that? Well, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm giving you a, yes. a, a awareness, uh -huh. awareness is down here, which I think you don't know what you don't don't aware out here. But you here here. I have my awareness, uh -huh. and that's because, and the and the and the soul is awareness and I see it as loving awareness mm. Okay. Mm, sweet mm, that's beautiful. now this is uh, this is you this is such far out stuff because my I, I it's uh, I am loving awareness mm. I am loving awareness I am loving awareness now uh, that means that I, anything that I aware of, I love. Mm -hmm. oh, that's beautiful. Because, wow. because um, Maharaji turned me on and turned a lot of us on. His his. His um, his love, which was um, like the uh, when I came to him, he, he first mentioned that I had the night before uh, said, dry, uh, thought about my mother. And and I was in front of him. He was here, and I was. Oh my God! I started. He he knows all the things. The the, I don't want anybody to know. But and I started listing them, to my you know don't. And I looked out at the grass. Oh my God! He, oh no! Not, oh no! Oh, oh. <laughs> and, uh, just those, you know, those terrible ones. And then he was standing right there. His head, head was here, and I looked up, and he, he was. He was. It was the first time I was confronted with, with. Unconditional love, and he, I look. He looked at me with such love, such, and I knew he was. I knew he those. He's a mind where you know. Right. He knew, and he just loved me and loved me and loved. Me. And I thought, well, now if that unconditional love, how would I? How would I? Uh, unconditional love. My gosh, I love this wall. <laughs> <laughs> and this, after all, this wall is a manifestation. You know, it's built by the, yeah, but mm -hmm. it's a manifestation. Mm -hmm. And I love this wall. I just love it. And and when I'm down here, when I'm the it. I, the ego, has as its base fear. Mm -hmm. The this down here, which we'll call something else, 
Um, this is based in love. Mm -hmm. And I know because it, in the Hindu business, the, the uh, Atman and the Jivatman. The Jivatman is the individual soul. Mm -hmm. And the Atman is the one. And you have it, you have it, you have it, I have it. Mm -hmm. And they have it. Mm -hmm. And it's not personal. No. Mm -hmm. No. And it's 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 wisdom, it's um, peace. Is compassion, it's joy, it's all those things. Mm. And and the uh, Jivatman comes out of that. See, uh, the ego comes, it, the ego is part of the incarnation. So the ego is frightened of death because it the death means the end of the incarnation but the the this going from incarnation to incarnation and incarnation and it tried this one and it I don't know where when when it came in but it it's came in mm -hmm. and it's already died died plenty of times and but, uh, and so, this is uh, couched in love, it's couched in love, and um, when Maharaji said, Ram Dass, I want you to love everybody. And I said, I can't do that, Maharaji. The spirit was from here. Mm -hmm. Because he was trying to get me to, to be my soul. And so then I got home and I thought, I, this is earlier, but... Uh, but and now I said, I said, uh, somebody that I don't, I can't, um, I can't love, like George Bush. And so I got a frame and I put George Bush on my puja table. Now, the puja table is full of souls. But then there's George. Uh, George, I looked at as an in incarnation because I know him as president and so on. So I thought, well, that poor soul mm -hmm. that has that incarnation, um, it's like Ravana in, in, in the Ramayana. And uh, and uh, so I thought of George as that soul that, and perhaps that soul taken a very, very unfortunate uh, incarnation. <laughs> Unfortunate for a lot of people. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> like, like Ravana. Yes, exactly. <laughs> See, and Ravana was, it said in the Ramayana, Ravana was in his last birth, very high yogi. Hmm. And that, and that's, that's, uh, that's a, it sounds like, uh, Trick something. 
you know. Yeah. And it meant that I, he said, you want to love everybody, and mm -hmm. everybody, everybody has that mm -hmm. soul. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay. So that's beautiful. You want, I, I you love that phrase, I, loving I, awareness. I love that. I I see the vipassana as a way to get the ego out of the way, so that the heart can open. Yes. To that loving energy. The heart can witness the 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 mind and its product. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you have a question? No, I was. I just had a, a comment. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, I no, I, my, I don't have any particular question at this moment. Do you have a question? Do you have an answer? I just asked one. <laughs> you have answers. <laughs> Neither an answer nor a question. It seems for me what you're saying has been a lot of the journey that there's some way I needed to use mindfulness first just to see the you know the waterfall of thoughts the amazing chaotic neurotic yeah. stuff there and realize that there was some other place from which to be aware of it so already that was some some shift of identity but it needed the heart to come in just as you're saying whatever language soul heart somehow in some way, I couldn't even let it let myself drop more deeply without that love. Otherwise, it was judging. Okay, how are you doing? Are you doing your meditation? Doing all right? Yeah, a little yeah. scorecard, or yeah. you know, am I being a good yogi? Or yeah. and then all of a sudden, no, no, it's not about that. It's it's loving awareness, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. um, and that actually lets awareness open. I mean, they're then they become, as you say, they're married. They're they're just a, yeah. Just. Um, I have a different question because I, I I'm thinking about the moment that Wes described uh, of being in Bodh Gaya with you and uh, Joseph Goldstein and Danny Goldman and all those people at that Goenka retreat. Mirabai. Mirabai Bush. That's right. And thinking about destiny. Because there's some way in that those 30 people have flowered and kind of like Johnny Dharma seed or something. They've just scattered, <laughs> you know, Dharma across the Western world. Um, do you have any thoughts about destiny or what, what, you know, what makes something like that happen? There's, there's a thing that uh, is, is, it's too bad the language is uh, interfering, but there is a thing called um, um, soul pods. Soul pods. Soul pods. They In are, Hinduism? No. In Howie. <laughs> In science fiction, what? Well, it was some some people. You want me to tell you? No, no it's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> it's it's souls who who travel together, mm. and you know you you familiar. You know if you. you the somewhere I know you. We're in you. a pod now, it seems. <laughs> yes, here. <laughs> Three peas in a pod. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Three a peas in a pod. pod. <laughs> so I just think that is is in 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 Dharma land, mm. or if, if we have. Um, Uh, where we are, we are connected, and then we come to and come and the mess this is, you know. The mess. I think that you know historically, the West was so hungry for some other way of understanding the world and. Uh, you know, we've got, we've sort of progressed ourselves into a corner and uh, 
we need to find uh, different different ways of being and different ways of living. But we all we all we all t- took the 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 acid. Huh? We all took the acid. No, <laughs> <laughs> it was psilocybin yeah. first, and then it was, we all took the pill. We all took the the riches from the east. Mm-hmm. And we we were we recognized them. We recognized them. I guess the acid is not helped. Helped. No. No. Because I can see my progression from psychology. My psychology didn't quite have. Um, insight to uh, to uh, to to the levels of consciousness that, that I felt I should get and then uh, and did but acid it got to them and I throw and uh, and uh, and uh, somehow I should be living in all these uh, um, planes of consciousness. But all I know is when I, when I went back and forth from Nanital to New York City, New York City was full of ego, and Nanital, they were, they were souls. Mm. They, they were souls, and they did their 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 roles. They did their roles, the, the sweeper or something like. They did it as you know, no nothing, mm. and they never they don't you know around around here. What do you do? Yeah. And that that. They don't. They. They. I'm a sweeper. <laughs> I'm, I'm a. I'm. A, I'm the. Uh, the governor. Doesn't matter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, Jack, you talk a lot about you know the potential uh, that that the positive states that that's what we we weren't paying any attention to that. The, we were that psychology was mostly dealing with neurosis and pathology. You and have pathology. that DSM four, and it's full of a, you know, a thousand different pathological states, and it's all about getting the right medicine or seeing what's wrong with you, instead of seeing the way Maharaji saw you, with the uh, love. Well, that's one of the things I, um, I question about you, that you had uh, um, spiritual training, and then you, then you, you uh, I mean, I left psychology, yeah, and you. <laughs> I needed it. You? I had these, you know, maybe you know something about this. I had some uncooked seeds. From yes. Us. <laughs> <laughs> and the meditation Parts of it was fantastic, and I had rapture and joy and oneness, and then I would fall back like acid, not quite. And then I realized that um, that I had also done the kind of spiritual bypass, you know, some kind of end run around some yeah, of that stuff. Yeah. And I needed to deal with that stuff somehow uh, to figure I out. See. There was a kind of, you know, I would drop into baby ego, you would call it, or someplace yeah. where I felt wounded, abandoned, incredibly lonely, yeah. Yeah. and believe that stuff, even though another part would say, I know that's not true. Wait a second, it really felt yeah. felt true. So I needed to, I need to go back to kindergarten. I see. You know? I see. Some of I us see. are slow <laughs> learners. I see. Because <laughs> <laughs> I could say, why does he why do why do does he that? <laughs> I needed it. You know, have you seen the you've seen the end run thing, haven't you, where people know how to get high but they do yeah. use it to Kind of and, uh, not the my life stuff. Full of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now actually, it's interesting because I did this conference a couple of years ago with 
Thich Nhat Hanh at UCLA, and there was like two or 3,000 therapists there, and they were so hungry for spirit. They were so hungry not to look through the DSM and see people as damaged beings and, you know, as neurotic and as their pathology and you're bipolar and you're, you know, <clears throat> yeah. obsessive. And, and they were so hungry to hear from the soul or the, the love level that that's not who you really are. I mean, the whole room was lit up mm. by just hearing that because they were stuck too. Yeah. 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 I don't understand you better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I needed it. Slow, slow lane. Well, I so appreciate that um, you've made all those experiments, and I think it's great for a person in a teaching role to model the fact that you know you're not claiming any kind of perfection. That there's. Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> even though it's perfect, there's still room for improvement. That's, that's the right. Great Zen that's Master it. says. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a gift. To it is. Well, it's a it's a different. I mean, it's not about the perfection of the personality, as you would say. Yeah, it's the perfection of love. Yeah. and it or as the Zen patriarch says. You know, to be enlightened is to be without anxiety about non-perfection. To love it somehow. Yes. That's a little yes. heady. To be That's, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's really to perfect your... Just the question that you asked. You know, yeah. could you love this, this life, this incarnation, and the spirit behind it somehow? Mm -hmm. What is that yeah. incredible luminosity? Mm. One... When I, when I inhabit my soul, there is so much love in my life. Mm. Mm. So much love mm. in my life. I can and, see that. You're, you're yeah, surrounded and by I, People so much love that love. <laughs> love that love. Love that love. And you're they, waving at them in the beach and they're all waving back. Look what happened. We came <laughs> along with you. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh dear. It's 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 like it looks like in the ocean of love. And you've got to start with with I am a loving consciousness of my yes. mind, a loving awareness. And there are so many people, like uh, people uh, on the web. Um, they somebody somebody calls me. We call them heart to hearts. Mm -hmm. And on, on the uh, and the Skype, and they're in the living room, and I'm in my living room, and I I, I don't I haven't met this person. And I said to him, I love you so much. Mm. I mm. love you just so much. And I just love you. I can, you have the most beautiful heart. And the, the person's just like a flower. Mm. <laughs> uh, mm. Uh, mm. I'm... I, I'm working at being okay with imperfection, the imperfection of the world, the sorrows of the world, uh, my own a aging animal that I am. You know, that incarnation uh, is very strong in me. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can love it sometimes, but often it's not easy. I, I see so much sorrow in the world that makes me sad. Uh -oh. Me too. Suffering we were talking about. <laughs> yeah, the big D. <laughs> how, how do you interpret suffering?
getting what you want. What you don't want is suffering. Not getting what you want is suffering. Birth is suffering. Aging is suffering. Um, right. Having having needs, having having a constant. I mean, I, I could go on. Meaning, this is not what is suffering, but how do you interpret it? What does it mean? Does it have a purpose? Does that's, it that's, stay? Yeah. That's, that's the that, question. Yes. For me, for for me, the worst suffering is the cruelty that I see to to human beings, to animals. Um, that. Okay. Really gets to me. What is the purpose? Do you see it as a mistake? Can't we can't we get enlightened without suffering? Can't, do we have to have it in yeah. the mix? Oh. <laughs> no. Oh, well, no, no, no. But I know. But if you'd have created, if a world was different, then it wouldn't be suffering. We would still be. We would be enlightened, and we could. No. All right. We got to have it. Come on, <laughs> bring it on, bring it on. <laughs> see, like I, I, I. Uh, uh, a, a stroke, you know. Yeah. So uh, I was a stroke, and everybody in the all the the around me in the in the in the hospital, you poor all the oh, 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 and I and I had Maharaji on the wall, and I said to Maharaji, "You were so, uh, you, you gave me so much." Uh, so much, and then comes the stroke. What were you at the lunch or what? You know? <laughs> and 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 then I started to his his grace. This the grace, and so I uh, kept bringing them together and bringing them together and bringing them together. And then I got this uh, this concept. Uh, 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 grace. Uh, 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 I'll get um, uh, fierce grace. Mm. Fierce grace. Mm. Well, this is fierce grace. Yeah. And, and have I learned some things from this thing? What, Beca what, what would you say are some of the most important things? Well, for things? example, before the stuff, before the um, stroke, I wrote a book with Paul Gorman, uh, How Can I Help? I can help. I, you know. Now, if I write a book, it would be, how can you help me? <laughs> <laughs> right. So there's a great humbling that it has... Great humbling and dependency. Yes. Mm. And these were things I was so... Resistant. Uh, resistant, but uh, that... Uh, then I, I was silent for a while because mm. I... Uh, and it wanted, and the silence was so golden, mm -hmm. so golden. You didn't have to speak. I didn't have to speak. Yeah, yeah. You had said at one point that uh, that meditation didn't. I mean, when the pain was so intense, that meditation didn't offer you relief that you might have thought it, it would. Yes. I pain is the is the is the adversary to my to my sadhana mm. and pain is it captures your uh, consciousness mm -hmm. and and when I get pain I get caught in the pain, and then I'm caught. I'm caught in the pain. Right. He's caught in the pain. It's your pain. It, yeah, and it, that pain goes distant from me. Distant from me. And I think of other people's pain. Hmm. That, that's the one we're dealing with. Other people's pain. 
But I, I think the question is, why is, why is there something pain? And I have, a, a, because I'm a, a guru and so on, um, I have a, a, a surrender, surrender, surrender. And I, the one, is farther up the mountain than me. My mind, what is, why does that suffering? Oh, Jesus. That's, that's with empathy. Hi, sweetie. Hey. Uh, and she thinks my hair is another cat. <laughs> <laughs> But that empathy is one to one. Mm -hmm. Compassion is one. Mm -hmm. My, I've got, there's a fellow that's got AIDS and his family doesn't speak to him and he's and he's broke, and he's got uh, uh, all his skin is falling, and and when I go into his room, I used to go in as a a a, a caring person. Mm caring person then I went I went into his room this uh, I'm soul and he's a soul mm -hmm. and so I said to him what how, what's the incarnation like and he tells me I tell him how my incarnation <laughs> <laughs> how's your incarnation <laughs> <laughs> And he's getting, because I'm re mirroring his soul. <clears throat> and his soul doesn't have to suffer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. But let's think of the why suffering. Suffering gives you a, a leg up of understanding your attachments. Mm -hmm. What uh, attachment, one attachment is life versus death. I have gotten into that sitting with people in at their bedside and I see that it comes that that everything around them this pictures of a family mm -hmm. the the doctors the friends everybody is saying come on come on come on come on and that's and there's nobody there say you're going through a a uh, a, 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 um, a uh, a ceremony like ceremony mm -hmm. and you should you, maybe you should have I'm going to be neutral. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be neutral. Mm -hmm. And if you want a neutral rock, I'm here. Mm -hmm. But I've got to, cat, to work with my 
fear about death. Yeah, it's, it's easier to do for somebody else <laughs> yeah. than, than when it comes. I want you to sit with me. <laughs> yeah. It's easier to do for somebody else, but when it's your own death, somehow it engages that other part. It says, no, 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 wait a second, I have, I have my pictures in my family, yeah. and I, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But I wanted to ask a question. I know you've, you've yeah. sat with a lot of people who have died, and do you find that for the most part, people do let go just before? Like, do you find, it's been my sense, my cousin I found out today just died a few days ago, um, I don't know, I didn't hear the details of, of who was with him or how how that passing went, but he was, had just had a horrible operation and was on life support. He probably wasn't very conscious, but um, it's been my sense when I've heard of other deaths, most everyone I've heard about, there comes a point where they do just let go. Do, do you find that? Yeah. But they, they, like my father, he was a beer, uh, uh, a man, uh, man. <laughs> and he got to the point when he became uh, like a child, or the, you know, the word the, I had the uh, when he was um, um, uh, in his early years. And he and I would sit out uh, at his golf course at uh, uh, be and there was one night a, a beautiful sunset. So I said, "Dad, isn't that beautiful?" And he said, "But you see how beautifully it cut." The lawn, you mean? The lawn, because he just, he just cut the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> That's who he was. Yes. <laughs> but, but now he's 90, 94, and I'm, he's in bed, and I'm holding his hand, and this beautiful sunset, and he rich, isn't that beautiful? Oh, mm, wow. See that, the, yes. the church? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for allowing us to uh, have this wonderful conversation, waving to us on the beach and getting us to come to your home. And uh, I didn't know I was such riches in... in, 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 in. And easy pickups. Offer <laughs> <Right. laughs> some food, we show up. Right. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. Bye. Namaste. 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 <laughs> Be happy. Be happy. <laughs> or not, as you like. <laughs> <laughs>